Hi, I'm Allison C. Meyer, reporting from Brooklyn, and I'm going to tell you about Georgiana Hofton. I'm a writer, and I often write about art, and this is based on a story I did for the data visualization publication Nightingale and what this artist visualized were ghosts. So, decade before abstraction would emerge in art, the new British gallery on Old Bond Street in London was filled with paintings unlike any that had been seen before. For four months in the summer of 1871, visitors were amazed and startled by the abstract whirling lines and a rainbow of colors that filled each of the 155 watercolor and pencil drawings. All the more shocking, these drawings were created by a woman at a time when paintings of flowers were more acceptable subjects. Plus, she claimed to be guided by the spirits of the dead. Georgiana Hofton never called her art abstract. For her, it was a visual language for portraying an unseen world. Her art was a direct result of her participation in spiritualism, a religious movement in which talking to the dead was central. One of the methods used in spiritualist seances was automatic drawing, in which a medium's hand was guided by spiritual contact. This was how Georgiana created her art. Two decades before that London exhibition, Georgiana had found solace in spiritualism after the death of her sister Zilla in 1851. In her grief, Georgiana lamented, I felt as if I should never again use pencil or brush. Through spiritualism, she found a way to be thus reunited to the many dear ones whom I had lost, including her sister who would guide several drawings. In spiritualism, where women could be mediums and lead seances, Georgiana, who chose to stay unmarried, also found a place of power, opportunity, and community at a time when options for women were few. Not welcomed in the art salons, she made her art in seances. Rejected by the Royal Academy and other galleries, she organized and paid for her own exhibition. Most days of the 1871 show, Hofton was there to share the meaning behind the watercolors with visitors. Holding up a magnifying glass, the vortexes of color and line, she would explain how they were channeled through her contact with the spirit world. If viewers were to see the back of these drawings, they would find extensive text made through automatic writing. These writings explain the meaning of the drawings and their spirit artists, which included Renaissance masters like Titian and Caravaggio, although Georgiana's drawings looked absolutely nothing like their work. It was important to Hofton that her visitors would have this context. She had a catalog printed for the show and included an extensive index on color symbolism. She wrote that she offered this guidance not just for comprehension. It was also presented in the hope that many will follow my example and strive to develop themselves as drawing mediums. Some critics were awed by her otherworldly drawings with one proclaiming them the most astonishing exhibition in London at the present moment. Others did not quite know what to make of this art but that was so different from the rest of Victorian visual culture, especially with its shadows of the occult. One said that a visitor to the exhibition is alternatively occupied by sad and ludicrous images during the whole of his stay in this gallery of painful absurdities. Georgiana took this in stride, writing that my exhibition baffled them utterly. Therefore, they sometimes took refuge in unseemly words about what they did not understand. Shortly after the exhibition, she collaborated with England's first spirit photographer, Frederick Hudson. Together, they created numerous spirit photographs with Georgiana acting as a medium. She also encouraged the practices of other artistic mediums, such as Alice Mary Theodosia Perry, who sketched these torrents of enigmatic faces in pencil. Despite the strong attachment to her community, after she died of a stroke in 1884, her work was soon forgotten. A substantial number of the pieces exhibited in 1871 are now lost. The largest known group of her drawings is held by Australia's Victorian Spiritualist Union, which were acquired if they were brought to the country for a 1910 exhibition. It's often in these collections and archives outside of mainstream institutions where work like that of Georgiana survives. Almost 150 years following the 1871 exhibition, she finally received London's acclaim in a celebrated show at the Courtauld Institute of Art in 2016, which led critics to ask if she should be considered as the first abstract artist. 
Well, Georgiana Hofton would never have called her art abstraction. It was a protocol for contacting another realm. It's important that the reassessment of her legacy has caused a shift in the understanding of the long dominant narrative about modern art. The art world may not have been ready for Georgiana Hofton in 1871, but now we can recognize her singular vision in using art to portray something divine. So I'm gonna raise a toast to Georgiana who didn't let anyone hold her back from seeing into a world beyond this one.